die no more. Yep. Once you die, no more. I tried to point that out. And all he did was keep throwing out scriptures. It's, it's astounding. Like, seriously, I asked him at one point, I'm like, are you even reading my explanations? Are you even reading them? Yeah. There's no more point. I, I, I'm not saying anything else to the man. There's no more point. Yeah. I apologize for saying it to him. <laughs> like I said, I don't know. I mean, he is, but it's not my place to say that about him. Of course, I think by the definition, it is accurate. So, uh, anyway. You guys can at least have some idea now on why exegesis is important. Okay? Okay. If you're having trouble with it, with exegeting, understanding a scripture, you hear someone contradict it, it helps to find, find somebody who has experience in it and saying, read this scripture and tell me what you think it's saying. If you ask me, I'm going to tell you what does it say, because that's what it means. God did not need to mince words. He's rather proficient with the language he created. He created all of them, for those who don't know. Um, Tower of Babel. He kind of had a hand in that, just saying. So if he created all languages, he can use all languages. If he can create this universe and everything within it, he can make sure his Bible is right. So when we exegete scripture, God said what he meant. We don't have to ask ourselves, what does this mean? Revelation, that's apocalyptic language. Did the same author write it? Apocalyptic language? In short, it means it's designed to paint a horrific scene that is not actually going to happen. It's a scare tactic, basically. It uses things like locusts coming out of this black cloud and 200 million riders with tails of scorpions. It's like this gloom and doom scriptures. Like These will be actual events, but it's not going to happen like that. The locusts are helicopters. It blows my mind every time someone says that to me. I always have to give the same defense. What does it say? From the clouds came locusts. Does it say from the clouds came beasts or something like a locust? No. It says from came locusts. Who here thinks John knew what a locust was? Pretty sure he knew. And then he becomes descriptive. Well, hold on. Before I get to that point. After he says, came the locusts, it says, the locusts were commanded not to harm any green thing. Who can tell me here what locusts eat? In a word, foliage. Okay? If it wasn't a locust, a command to not eat green things would not have to have been issued. Now would it? Do helicopters eat green things? They don't have mouths. So maybe they eat bullets. They spit them out. Oh, it's a metaphor, right? Maybe they're green bullets. Some M, some uh, AR, or AR-15 or M-16 rounds have green tips. Maybe they're the green tip bullets. Maybe they're not sure to shoot the green ones, but we'll shoot the red tip bullets. You see how when you stray away from your ex- an exegetical approach, you used to get really far out there. But you know what? These people believe that. This is not just an analogy. People believe it wholeheartedly, and it terrifies me. It goes back to that same question. Where's the discernment? The Holy Spirit does not make mistakes. The Holy Spirit gives us discernment. So someone who cannot discern the word of God, something's missing. And you know what? I cannot state that for fact, but that's what I believe. The reason I believe it in Christ's Olivet Discourse before the end will be great apostasy. The word apostasy means falling away from the faith. 
a great apostasy. When the Bible uses the word great, it has many different meanings. In context, a global falling away from Christ. Which is kind of funny, because in China, it's mass revolution. They are coming to Christ in droves. That number's going to plane off. A lot of people believe there will be one last great revival before the return of Christ. We are not prophetic in any way. When the Third World War happens, and it will happen, I'm pretty sure America is going to be wiped off the face of the earth for the most part. And those that survive will suffer nuclear radiation. They're going to die anyway. That's what I believe. People try to find reasons to put America in the Bible. America's not in it. It's not about you. It is that same pride that pushes them to try to find America in the Bible. That same pride that distorts their perception of God's word. It is pride that caused the fall of Satan. It will be pride that causes the fall of man. Pride tears us away from the arms of God. Because we found somebody who made a logical case. And it fits what you think it should be. Are we supposed to believe what other men say or what God himself says? The ignorance, what is it? The Bible says, my children suffer for lack of knowledge. My children perish for lack of knowledge. Does that mean they, the bodies die on the spot? No. That death is eternal. It is eternal death. Because my children do not seek after me. And because my children do not read the word of God. Their knowledge is lacking. That lack of knowledge, that lack of discernment, that lack of understanding costs them their souls. It's not my words. Those are God's words. They will die for eternity for their lack of knowledge. Because they didn't seek after him. It is our job as Christians to do what we can when God provides an opportunity. For me, an opportunity has been presenting itself all week long. I'm going to tell you guys a story and we're going to close. I was sitting outside responding to a gentleman. He's an atheist. He was listening to one of my studies here. He contacted me by email and engaged me in a discussion. Very respectful full-blown atheist wanted to have a discussion about some, some things I taught on. Okay? About some things I taught on. Okay? He had disagreements. As an atheist, I imagine he disagreed with everything I said. Just guessing. Okay? But he had some particular qualms with some of the things that I said for personal reasons. I was trying, I was halfway through a response and from behind me I hear the words the Old Testament. My ears perk up real quick. And I look over my shoulder at a glance. There's a group of guys over there, at least three or four by my count, at a glance. I try to eavesdrop. People say you shouldn't do that. Eh. I heard something that intrigued me, that interested me. I tried to listen. There's a music playing couldn't really hear so I go back to writing and I hear it again the Old Testament that's it just those three words and I'm sorry when you're focusing on something and you just hear behind you just the right words to catch your attention something that you are interested in is probably not coincidence there's that thing called that still small voice it's not always an actual voice but sometimes it's somebody else's voice. If God can't speak through other people, you're tying his hands. So I heard it twice. So I forcibly shut out anything they were saying, and I finished my email. And I finished it, I put the phone down. And in my mind, this happened in about two seconds, I said, I heard this little, just this little thought, this thing saying, go talk to him. And in my mind, I said, what would I say? Again, this is a two-second conversation. Go talk to him. What would I say? Hey, guys, I was, I was intentionally trying to ease up on your conversation. 
and figured I'd just come over here and see if I could join. That's a two-second conversation in my mind. It goes, mm, it's almost instantaneous, really. Picked up my stuff, pushed my chair in, walk over there, stand up there. They all look at me and said, hey, guys, I was trying to ease up on your conversations. Figured I'd come over and see if I could join you. Yeah, man, pull up a chair. This was roughly about 8.45. We leave somewhere about 2.08. You at Starbucks? We're at Starbucks. It's about 2 in the morning. Hmm? Out on the patio. Out on the patio. At one point, at first, for about 45 minutes, I sat there and I listened. One of them finally said, so are you a believer? Because I had already asked them. And then I was thinking of their conversation. And they finally, one of them finally asked, so are you, do you believe in God? And I grinned. In my mind, knowing what I do, which is what I'm doing right now, I'm like, you could say that. He said, oh, okay. And I said, I teach eschatology, apologetics, hermeneutics, and exegesis. A couple eyes go, I don't know what he just said. And they didn't ask either. My point had been made. After about another 10, 15 minutes, the group leader, from, my, from what I estimate, gave his testimony. I'll tell you what, that young man has a testimony. And the fact that he drops F-bombs every now and then does not change what he believes. He's still a baby Christian. He's about 21 years old. He's still a baby Christian. He has a long way to go. He hasn't learned to get that control, take authority over his words yet. I'll get to that with him at some point. But not the night I meet them. I need to build a rapport first. But after his testimony, the questions ensued for the next three hours, four hours, however long it was. So what do you think about this? What do you think about this? What do you think about this? Now, here's the impressive thing about God. Anyone who spends any time with me knows I have a horrible memory. Horrible. At this point, God has ejected almost all knowledge from my brain unless I need it at that moment, and he puts it back in there. Because what I'm studying requires so much concentration, studying, and so forth that I can only retain so much. But it leaves that blueprint, that information is blueprinted onto my brain. And every time they ask me a question, not only did I come up with an answer, it properly exegeted scripture, but the scripture itself I could quote verbatim. The word of God was returned. The knowledge was returned to my mind in the moment I used it. Not where it was found, but what it said. Five, uh, there was five of them in total. Four of them believed in, four of them were Christians. One of them, baby a Christian, and the rest of them, he knows almost nothing. The other three had written enough that every time I spoke the word of God, they heard it. You got heads nodding. They knew what I was saying was the truth. They got confirmation in their spirits. One of them is an atheist. I call him an atheist because he claims to be an atheist. I'll tell you guys a secret, and I told him this. He's not an atheist. He's not. He says he is. He's not. No. It's hard. It's Without giving you every word that was said... If any of you had been sitting there, you would have been sitting there with your jaws on the ground right next to mine, trying to comprehend. This young man said things like, if I die and I go before God, I didn't accept him. And if he sends me to the lake of fire and I have to spend eternity there, it's no one's fault but my own. He said that and I, my brain quit functioning. I'm like, you're right. How do you know that? If you don't believe in God, that concept should never cross your mind. That was only the first of many things he said. He will argue with other atheists who said nothing good comes from the Bible. Look at all the holy wars, the lives that have been lost because of religion. Okay. And he says... I was raised with the Bible. I don't believe in God. But because of the Bible, it has set a moral principle in my life that I will do anything for anybody. I will help anybody. 
being polite. 